What's cracking, everybody? I'm Wolf. Yo, this is Trey. And we're the band P.O.D. from Southern California, S.D. You know what I'm saying? And that just happened. You see it right there. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It is Front Row Joe hanging. We always seem to meet at the bar uh, with uh, with P.O.D. I got uh, Trey over here, uh, Wove on my right. So happy that you guys uh, took some time to, to talk with us. Thank you so very much. Good to see you again, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be here, man. Awesome, awesome. So let's talk about the new album. Uh, really excited about it. Uh, Circles, first time you guys actually worked with a writer-producer group, The Heavy Out, in, in L.A. What kind of flavor did they add to the P.O.D. recipe? I mean, Trey could probably back this up. It's just, it's just a different experience, you know what I mean, for our band. We're so used to writing, like, you know, amongst ourselves and doing our own thing, but it's like this day and age, you know what I mean, like just trying to change up the, not really changing up the band flavor, but just adding a little more spice to it, you know what I mean? So... Um, these guys from the heavy, they work with a lot of like, you know, pop, reggae type of artists. And we felt that that would match like our style, you know what I mean? Coming from the South, you know, come from, you know, Southern California. These guys work with like the heavy, you know, bands like that, you know what I'm saying? So we were like, hey, these guys seem like they would fit with our type of music. And so we tried them out and it, and it worked out, you know what I mean? It was really comfortable working with those guys. You know, it was fun, the vibe was right, and it was natural, it was cool. Yeah, well, we're going to get into some of the tracks, but, uh, you know, definitely a departure, but still had the same P.O.D. Uh, foundation. Were there any musical concepts or anything that they came up with, Trey, that you guys were like, oh, man, I don't know, that might be, uh, might be a little bit outside of the box. Uh, we'll see if we can do it. Is there anything in particular that you could point to? I don't think there was anything um, in particular that was like, no, this is completely whack. I think a lot of times, we, look, we, we're used to doing things a certain way. You know, we've been doing this for 26 years as a band, you know, writing and stuff like that. And let's get together and write music. It's just something that kind of come natural to us. But um, to have a different set of ears come in and kind of just um, maybe put a spin on what we're thinking was cool. There was a couple of times I think maybe they may have been like, oh, I don't know, but let's try it out and see what happens. And, you know, it came out dope, you know. But, um, I mean, of course, there, I'm, I'm sure there were a couple of little nuggets here and there. They were just kind of like, we were kind of like, oh, I don't know if that's going to match us. And we kind of tweaked it a little bit. But um, like Will was saying, man, it was a good um, vibe between us. I mean, I think we had a connection. They understood P.O.D. as a band. So they didn't push us too far from outside of our zone. You know what I mean? It's like they understand what, you know, what, what P.O.D. style is and... They just kind of added that extra extra flavor, extra sauce. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's really evident. There's a lot of kind of new cool stuff that's that's on there. Uh, you mentioned uh, the the reggae background. Of course, you guys are known for you know being huge reggae fans. Yeah. Uh, this album in particular, Circles, seem to be ripe with a lot of reggae tones. Is that I, is that a I don't think cool assumption? I, yeah, I don't think you hear like reggae like type like musical parts. You don't really hear that, but you feel that type of groove and that type of vibe you know what i'm saying like without it being reggae there's no skank there's no like one drop there's no there's none of those kind of beats going on but at the same time you're still getting you're feeling that type of flavor which i think our band you know speaking for our band does really well because we do love that kind of music and we always have that in the back of our brains or or like those kind of influences that are always like penetrating like our thought process and so it's going to come out regardless, even if it's a rock track or whatever, we just kind of swing that way. You know what I mean? That's just naturally the way I drum. It's naturally the way Trey plays bass, Marcos plays guitar. And, you know, so it's cool to meet, to team up with the guys like the heavy that kind of, they didn't, like like Trey was saying, they didn't really like say, you guys got to do this. They were just taking what we were already had and they were just kind of like spicing it up with, with the new with production, with beats and like, you know, other musical things like keyboards and stuff like that, which was really cool for us to, to have or to have people be a part of the team to do that. And when we heard it and if they played it and it sounded right for the song, then we're like, dude, that works. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. That's what's up. So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. You want to add to that? Well, and, and that well, 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 uh, just to echo kind of what Wolf was saying, but that d that um, reggae vibe is in our DNA as a band, dude. So it's like it's always in the back of our brains, man. Whenever we're writing something, it's just that backbeat, that groove, kind of that reggae just has. So I mean, if you know the history of P.O.D., we've always had this kind of flavor in, in our music. Sometimes it's been a little bit heavier, sometimes not, but it's always been there. So it's just natural. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, bless you, man. Yeah. Uh, 
it's it seems like there was a lot in in this album like more more so than maybe previous albums but that that just may be me i don't know i, I think this record like you know what i mean like, a, like we're known for like in our in our early years like being more of a heavy band but over the 26 years i think you can see like the different changes in our band like musically like we don't have to play like the heaviest songs you know what i mean we have flavor like chili pepper style or you know throwing the santana type of vibe i i think that that the rock world is accepting of that from our band because they know that we're gonna like switch it up a little bit yeah. which is cool you know what i mean yeah well you talked about being a little mellow you got you got a mellow center in this thing but you bookend it you start off with rocking with the best yeah. ended up with soundboy killer yeah. i mean that is true blue cool. pod yeah. uh you know blow, melt your face off blow the top off the off the off the roof so um also a lot of vocal layering too you mentioned some of the layers and keyboards and stuff am i right in that a lot of vocal layering i think i think uh, over the years i think sunny has like become a great singer more than a rapper you know what i mean in the beginning like back in the early days it was more like rapping and like screaming and yelling but over the years like you can see like the transition of becoming from that to where he is now and which opens up a different door for pod to like write melodies and like sing songs instead of like screaming them you know what i mean which is which is to me is better for the ear you know <laughs> you know what i mean but that's just me i like i like the heavy stuff too but i also like to hear like a heavy song with melody in it too yeah right. yeah a lot a lot of melodic uh uh in this as well yeah for sure well, let's talk about the album cover it's really interesting uh who's the who's the artist on that um Wolf might have a better uh, thing for this, but we had a couple people. I, I, the idea is the band, is okay. the band's. Um, we work with a label, and like we've been doing this record on the fly, like in between tours and all that kind of stuff. So doing the artwork was kind of like a collaboration of what we wanted it to look like. But the label had like a, has an art department, then they kind of like were just pitching ideas, and we just kind of crafted it as it was going along. And it's, it kind of fits the look of the band we're from southern california you got the beautiful sunset right. it's it's funny because um sunny's mother my aunt she used to love butterflies you know what i mean and that was like a big thing in our family she always did like these butterflies for for that to be on the, to have butterflies on that record just this is just me per, yeah. speaking personally is is special it's cool yeah. and, I, and i'm pretty sure it means something to sunny too well i was wondering if it was a holdover from you know a previous album uh, thinking of tomorrow or thinking of for thinking about forever send me a butterfly is that a holdover theme yeah, yeah you, I, I could definitely see that for sure man i mean i'm sure it was back in in, in sunny's mind and everybody's mind when that that situation came up but also too man like we're, we've never been a one-dimensional band either and that's something you just you kind of understand about us man so for us um we don't all just listen to metal music we don't listen to just heavy stuff i mean we come from a lot of different genres of music so i think the album artwork and even the music reflects that multi-dimensional type of um hybrid listening you know different styles of music man so um yeah i mean i mean that that artwork definitely expresses the uh, character around the songs and what this album is about. So, well, and a lot of people, fans uh, in particular, for sure, like to kind of hypothesize yeah. theories about what the album cover might mean or, or whatever. But certainly, the butterflies—that's what I picked up on. Cool. Uh, also, too, you know, uh, circles. Yeah. You got the sunset. Sun's a circle. It makes a circle around the Earth. You get sunrise, sunset. Yeah. Uh, the circle of life with the butterflies. They start off as a caterpillar and then turn into a butterfly yeah, and head out. So all that. Stuff. Have you heard? any crazy stuff not yet but i i like i like i like i like your yeah. i like your analogy that's cool all right cool awesome i think we've always tried to do albums that kind of have people think you know what i mean it kind of you know it has multiple meanings but one core uh idea mm -hmm. so you got it man yeah. When well, you're talking about uh, your musical references, I'm thinking that I picked up on some uh, Cypress Hill and some yeah. uh, musical youth. Yeah, uh, youth is, is, in, is like the sunny reference to like a musical youth. It's not the same lyrics, but the, the but the break beat in between. Yeah. I think it's on the song called On the Radio. Yeah, um, yeah on, on the Radio. Yeah, yeah. has that one. In there and, it, and it has a it has a musical youth. Um, hook in it but the lyrics are different but it's the same melody and that's cool that you picked that up you know what I mean yeah right on so the kids these days you know what I mean like they they they're not old enough to even know where that came from but obviously you do pass the dochi man <laughs> so inside that's right I mean. so for you guys watching this that don't know about musical youth that's a great, that's a great band that was a great single that they had <laughs> right on right on so uh let's uh let's talk about um the other song home 
Um, now we can take that to be literally home or we can take that to be existentially, you know, the big uh, sandbox in the sky. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what do you guys like to do? Because you've, you, we talked about it earlier, you got right off of Shiprock, uh, went into uh, touring, you did the Gen X tour, you've been overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, when you finally do get home, what do you like to do when you get home, Trey? You know, honestly, you might have to be on the road with these dudes for a long time, man. I like to be around some estrogen. <laughs> you know, so just being around my wife, dude, and just like, just a different non-male situation. The softer it's, touch. The softer touch, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, yeah, just uh, spending time with the family, man. I mean, just kind of being normal, not living out of my suitcase, you know. Um, but I mean, I, I love being on the road with these guys. It's always fun being on the road, but, you know, sometimes it's just kind of just unwind and just do normal stuff like pay a bill or freaking you, know, you actually like paying bills you have to be on the road heck yeah man <laughs> <laughs> what about you well i'm echoing trey man i mean i like everybody watching who it, i mean we're normal people just like everybody else whatever you would think you would want to do if you're away from home for months and months at a time that's yeah. what that's what we do that's yeah. what we do yeah <laughs> so the mundane of us regular people that's what you kind of enjoy we're regular people too man you know what i mean that's true that's true you got to be blessed to like play music and and do it for a living, uh, you know, around the world, and and people come to our shows, and, and thank you for that. But yes. like any like everybody else, we're the same. So we like to do normal stuff, just like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. Well, uh, last time we were together, we uh, as you know now, we like to end with a that just happened moment. Yeah. We got one from you. Do you remember what it was? No, I do not. It was your TRL appearance. You said, oh, my gosh, that just happened. But we didn't get one from you, Wav. I got, now, now i got to think about it. Okay. Well, as you think about it, let me hit you with something maybe just a little bit different. It's a fan question, yeah, yeah. kind of along the same lines. I'll direct this to you, Trey. Is there any point in time where you can recall that you were like, man, you know what? I've arrived. I, I am officially a rock star. Is there anything that kind of hit where you could say that? I know you guys are too humble to, to admit something like that, but... Uh, I was actually living vicariously through my drummer and my lead singer on this particular moment where I said, we have vicariously, be or we became rock stars. We are at the uh, Grammys. These guys were presenting the trophy to uh, an award to Jennifer Lopez, and they could not help... But looking, check, at that ass. but looking at that ass. <laughs> but the fact that those two dudes are up on stage and my phone, and we were getting, not my phone, but we were just all getting blown up, all the homies and stuff like that, watching these two guys be on stage and us sitting next to Alicia Keys was on one side. I mean, I think it was uh, Mob was in the back. I mean, we just had people, you know, everybody around us. That was a moment to me. I was like, we're here. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So that sounds like you're hey, that hey, just hey, happened hey, moment. Hey, hey, what Trey said. She had just got done like like doing it like in public like insurance or insurance in her ass for a million bucks. Yes. So when we presented to it like you had to look at it. That's a million dollar ass. <laughs> and that just happened right in front of me. That, that there you happened. go. That there it is. That's that is fantastic. I love it. That's that's great. That's great.